and I wanted to wrap up my blog series on my interview with Karen Levion Beachside because I had an opportunity to have such a wonderful setting and I couldn't resist. So my last part of my series uh, with my interview on, with Karen Levion is about the French food rules. And this is from her first book, French Kids Eat Everything. She actually has a second book out, Getting to Yum, which is more of a, a, a guidebook to how to actually do some of this. And this is just some of the background of her story and some rules and recommended along the way. So I want to read these to you. So if you buy this book, um, on the back is the French food rules. And I'm going to give you my little interpretation of them too. So rule number one is parents, you are in charge of food education. And I couldn't agree with this more because our kids aren't getting this education in the schools anymore. And so parents, it's really up to us to do a lot of digging and find out uh, information about nutrition. It has changed so much from when even I was um, learning about food and nutrition back in high school. So much of it has changed from, oh, you shouldn't eat fats, to now you want to have fats in your diet, not too many carbohydrates, more protein, things like that. So we are in charge of our food education. Number two, avoid emotional eating. This is so hard. And no food rewards, bribes, etc. So in the practice, I would my practice, I would see a lot of parents that would reward with sweets and treats. And we just talk about that and some different strategies. Uh, also, grandparents, uh, daycare centers, places like that, people like that, also love to give our kids rewards for good behavior. Actually, studies show that this can lead to obesity and, and other diseases like diabetes later on because we learn to self-soothe with, with sweets and treats and that can be um, pretty hard on our kids later on. So it's hard right now telling our kids no and giving them good things to be rewarded with like stickers, trips to the movies, things like that, rather than suckers and treats and sweets and cookies. So um, you gotta try to avoid emotional eating and rewarding with treats and sweets. Number three, parents, schedule meals and menus. Kids eat what adults eat, no short order cooking. So this is a tough one too. It's a lot of times our kids don't want to eat what we eat, but they also are learning. Karen talks a lot about taste training, which I think is really important. And even it introduces the kids often need to try things 12 times before they will learn to like the foods. And if we just let them eat what they like, they would probably choose cookies and cakes and ice cream all day long, wouldn't we all? So it's really our jobs to introduce lots of different foods and plan our menus accordingly and have our children eat what we eat as adults. Number four, eat family meals together, no distractions. This is really important for our kids to learn and it's almost a way of mindful eating to them. It uh, lets it teaches the kids that what is on our plates is really important, where did it come from, and we spend time together as a family enjoying and tasting our food. It's really important. Number five, eat your veggies. Um, think variety, Karen recommends too, that we often just give our kids corn and beets and that's it. Adding some different ways of, of preparing these foods and vegetables makes it interesting and can make it fun. In, in the book Getting to Yum, Karen actually has different activities for introducing different vegetables and taste training, so it's very interesting. Number six, you don't have to like it, but you do have to taste it. She rec recommends saying this at every meal. So yes, our kids aren't going to like everything we serve, but they do need to taste it. Remember, 12 times they might have to taste it before they actually like it. And sometimes these are the most nutrient-dense foods that we want our kids to have, even though they might not like it the first time around. So they don't have to like it, but they do have to taste it. Number seven, no snacking. It's okay to feel hungry between meals. Now there are some special um, situations where kids must eat more. They're hypoglycemic and their pediatrician has recommended this. And obviously we always recommend uh, talking with your pediatrician about what your child needs specifically. But in most cases, our kids are getting so many snacks and then they're not hungry when it's meal time. So handing them goldfish and crackers and things like this when they're hungry uh, is, is detrimental to them eating good nutritious food at meal times. So at most, no snacking or maybe one. I know Karen talks about in France when she was with her kids, they got to have one snack around four o'clock 
uh, and then they ate a later meal as most Europeans do. So she really only had her kids snack one time during the day. Number eight, slow food is happy food, as in eat slowly. We are a rushed society and our kids are busy, we're busy, sometimes too busy. And this might be a, you know, a real value or philosophy choice is limiting the activities our kids are involved in. I know our kids typically have one activity per season. Uh, adding in multiple events and activities makes it really hard to get a good meal in for our kids. So that's one way that we have uh, helped our kids eat more slowly and eat together as a family. Number nine, eat mostly real food. Treats are okay for special occasions as long as there's not too many special occasions. Uh, in our society now, our kids go to many, many birthday parties, we have holidays, we have vacations, and so there's a ton of special occasions. We have to be, be careful with how many special occasions there are and um, you know, try to eat slowly and eat mostly real food save those treats for extremely special occasions, mostly eat the source foods like raw foods, raw vegetables, things like that. And number 10, remember eating is joyful. Relax. Sometimes it can be such a frenzy at the dinner table and we're all rushing and trying to make the meal and get everyone at the table at the same time and it doesn't seem like it's very joyful. So it's important as we are guiding our children with manners and time at the table together because then remember to have fun with it too and remember to enjoy our food and enjoy our time together. I think these are great tips that Karen Le'Veon shared with me in, our inter in my interview and you can find that interview on my YouTube channel for the whole interview. I really would recommend reading it but I wanted to at least highlight these 10 food rules that she so nicely gave us for some behavior ideas for your kids and your family. It really makes a difference. As a dentist, I see that many of these rules get broken, and that's what leads to cavities, obesity, diabetes, and I think we have a real problem in our society and our culture with this. It's, it's epidemic and problematic now. So if we step back, think about some food rules, then I know our families will be healthier and probably have less cavities too. I hope you enjoyed my blog series and my interview based uh, based on my time with Karen Le'Veon. Thank you and have a great day.